Welcome. Thanks for joining me for this one. And this is rental car number 155. And today I'm driving one of my all time absolute favorites. This is the 2020 Dodge Challenger SXT. This is a two door coupe that retails for, I don't know, like around 25 grand and is an absolute ton of fun to drive, especially when you consider the price point. All right, but before we jump behind the wheel, I do want to pop open the hood real quick and just talk about specs for a quick second. Uh, this is a 3.6 liter V6. It's a 24 valve VVT, and it's got an eight speed automatic transmission. All that combined gets you 305 horsepower. And trust me, you feel every single one of those horses. It's got a strong enough acceleration where it actually pushes you back into the driver's seat, which I mean, I absolutely love. Uh, but all, with all that power, uh, you get, I'd say, decent gas mileage. 19 miles per gallon in the city, 30 on the highway, which ain't bad, and a combined rating of 23. That gas cap is located on the driver's side, and it's uh, kind of stylized. I don't know about you, but I, I, it's growing on me. I didn't like this when I drove my first Challenger, but I do like the gas cap being all chromed out like this. And the fuel tank has 18.5 gallons, so you can go quite a ways in this thing before you have to fill up. All right, so let's start off by talking about handling at low speeds. And I'm really just talking about parking the vehicle. But for fun, I'm just going to go around a couple of medians a little bit aggressively to just kind of show you how the car moves when we're going around 20 miles an hour or so. So the handling is actually really crisp. Um, it might be the wideness of the tires or just how the car is set up. But man, you can really cut really nicely, which just makes it a tremendous amount of fun to drive. And uh, what I really like is when you do some quick turns both ways, you can feel the weight of the car kind of shift a little bit. And it's just a ton, a ton of fun. So watch what I mean. Like we just kind of do this and you can kind of feel the car tipping and grabbing the road really, really well, um, which is what I want on a car like this. I want it to be fun and aggressive uh, to drive. So at lower speeds, you definitely get that. Let's go a little faster. So let's let this BMW, BMW, this VW go by. Let's see if we can catch him. Should be pretty easy. So as I go through these curves, you'll see that the car just really hugs the road well. Um, so I can, I mean, I just feel like I could go a ton faster. I'm going 40 now, which is way over the speed limit for this area. But the car is just begging, begging to go faster, which is uh, so much fun. And the ride is really smooth. Although again, you do feel the weight kind of shift from one side to the other, which I just haven't experienced that much in a lot of the sedans I've been driving lately. Let's do a Yui, see if we can cut it. Yep, look, we didn't even drift out of the lane at all. The turning rate is just exceptional on this vehicle. Uh, so let's go a little bit faster through these curves. And I gotta say, I just feel so in control. I know that if I just adjust the steering wheel a little bit, I'm gonna get exactly the amount of uh, turn as I want. So I can really hug these corners and I can ride that crease on the edge of the road between the curb and the blacktop. I mean, it's almost effortless. Uh, so this is just a ton of fun to drive. And we're going 40, 45 or so uh, through these curves. And um, I kind of I kind of don't want to stop. But we're not done yet. We got to test out acceleration, which I'm hoping is going to be a lot of fun. So let's let this Dodge go by. And let's pull forward just a little bit till I get to a nice straightaway. Here we go. I'm gonna come to a complete stop. And I'm gonna floor it and hopefully we don't make too much noise. There's people working around here. That was the seat flying back. Oh, that sounds amazing. And there's enough acceleration. I'm actually being pulled back by the car and pushed into the seat, uh, which is what I want. I, I want to really know that I'm accelerating. Uh, let's do that one more time. Uh, I'll go all the way down to the end of this road. In the meantime, let's play around with acceleration while we're already moving. So we're going 40, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna floor it. Oh, and we just kind of lurch forward. There's maybe a one second delay, but when that delay ends, you really, really get a burst of speed. Um, all right, 
I'm gonna pull a Yui and hopefully uh, not be too much of a jerk to this set of cars. All right, so let's do one more um, acceleration from a, a dead stop. Let me get to a nice straightaway so we can really test it out. And hopefully there's no police around because I'm definitely gonna be going faster than the speed limit. All right, let's wait to see what this UPS driver does. All right, we're at a dead stop. Here we go, floor it. Whew. All right, so we got up to 55 in uh, only a couple of seconds. I'm gonna have to kill it because this is not the best place to be driving like that. Uh, so let's uh, shift focus a little bit, talk about cabin noise, uh, and then I'll take this thing on the highway and we can get it up to much, much higher speeds. Um, so I'm gonna be quiet for a second. I'm going 40 right now. Um, let's, let's listen to cabin noise. So not bad. I mean, you can hear a little bit that's going around us on the vehicle, but I mean, it's pretty quiet. And uh, this is not a quiet area. There's actually quite a bit going on. So I'm pretty impressed with cabin noise at moderate speeds. I mean, I just, I have to accelerate like that driving this car. Uh, so cabin noise is good and you can hear the engine. I mean, obviously, listen to that thing. Uh, so. I think it has the right balance. I can hear what's going on outside the vehicle, but not in an obnoxious kind of way. And I still can hear things like the engine and what I'm doing, which I think is a, a really good thing. The last thing I want to touch, test out with cabin noise is uh, let's turn on the radio. And we're going at about 50 right now. Let's, let's see what we can hear. So, I mean, I could make out what was being sung on the radio. I didn't feel like I had to turn up the volume at all. And that was at a six. So that's a really, really low volume. So I'm gonna say cabin noise on this is exceptional. I'm very, very happy with it. The last thing we have to test out is, uh, we gotta take this thing on the highway. We gotta get some speed on it. So let's do that next. All right, so I'm pulling on the highway. Thankfully, there's no one behind me. So when we get to this toll booth, I'm gonna go all the way to a dead stop. And I've got the performance screen up here for a zero to 60 timer, so slam on. Oh, I heard the tires squeal a little bit. All right, so we got 6.2 seconds to zero to 60. I was holding my breath the whole time. <laughs> this was really fun. All right, so we're going at about 70 right now. And I gotta be honest, it feels like we're going really, really slow. Uh, I know the car can do more. So let's see what she can do. Uh, let's do some passing. We're at 80. Yeah, now we're at 90. That was almost effortless. I'm gonna have to slow down a little bit because this BMW doesn't want to do the same thing I want to do. Um, rah. She's slowing down even more. Now we're at 65. All right. What is she doing? How about a turn signal maybe? That would have been nice. All right, but we can accelerate. Ah, I just love how that sounds. All right, so 70 miles an hour, car feels like it can go a lot, lot faster, and I feel completely in control. I don't feel like the car is shaking at all. I feel like I can change lanes without having to worry about even slipping even a little bit. Uh, this is just a lot of fun to drive at higher speeds. I am uh, really, really happy with performance. And 6.2 seconds from zero to 60, not bad. I mean, there was a slight incline on that, so uh, that's a decent speed, especially for someone like me driving because uh, I do tend to drive uh, a little bit like a grandma, maybe a little too cautious. Anyway, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. And I don't know if you noticed, but the cabin noise was also pretty good. I could hear the traffic around us, but uh, it wasn't obnoxious. 
it's actually, you know, the right amount of noise. I do want to know what's going on around me. And that's the uh, grandma in me again. Uh, so, big thumbs up. That was a ton of fun. I'm going to have to do that again. All right, I jumped inside. Here's the key fob. It's Dodge's standard spa fob. Fob. Uh, the logo on the back. A couple of buttons on the front. Just lock, unlock, trunk release, and then a panic button right here. Since we have a key fob, we have a push button start. It's located on the dash right here, and you get an off. And then watch, when I turn the car on, it'll go to on right here. Or run, I should say. Pretty simple steering wheel setup. Dodge's logo in the center. You have buttons to answer and hang up phone calls on the left, along with your virtual assistant button right there in the middle. A directional keypad right here on the left to interact with the large screen in the gauge cluster. I'll show you that in a second. And then on the right-hand side, uh, your cruise controls right here. And then also, one of my favorite features on Dodge's is that wrapped around the back, we have buttons that are really easy to access just using your fingers. This will adjust the volume, and then there's a mode button right in the middle that'll shift between FM, AM, and then uh, XM radio if you have it. Only one stock on this one for your wipers and your turn signal and all that good stuff. So, nice setup. Um, it's got a thicker steering wheel too, which I've always appreciated. It's just easier to grab and really manipulate as you're driving. And then, I mean, this is the highlight, at least for me, is the gauge cluster. I love the classic dials on the left and the right side. So we have RPMs over here on the left and then your speedometer over here on the right. And then a big digital display right in the center. Um, let me give you the basics. So we got a compass up here on the upper left, outside temperature, digital speedometer, odometer, and then you have gauges. Fuel is the most important right here on the right-hand side. Now, all of this is adjustable, which I find just absolutely fascinating. So I'm gonna be shifting through the screens using this keypad right here. And we're gonna to go to the settings screen. All right, so screen setup. Uh, I haven't seen this on any car yet, and I absolutely love this. So all of these things, upper left, upper right, in the center, down below, are adjustable. I won't bore you with this, but uh, let's, let's do the um, upper right. So you see how outside temperature is now um, illuminated. I'm going to select it and we can change that to a compass. We can change it to the time, the range until empty, your average fuel economy, um, your current miles per hour, trips, all this stuff. Or you can just turn it off if you don't want all of this information on the screen while you're driving. I just absolutely love this. Anytime you can customize a vehicle like this, it is a big, big thumbs up in my book. So you can do that for all of the, the information on the screen, including the odometer. You can actually turn it on and off if uh, it's not something you want to view. So all in all, a pretty beautiful display in my opinion. Let me show you a couple of other really quick things. I'm just gonna cycle through a couple of screens for you. So let me back out of this. So let me go to menu number one for you. Digital speedometer, pretty nice. Vehicle info, so we have tire pressure, we have uh, coolant temp, your trans temp, oil life, oil pressure, oil life again, battery voltage, and then back to tire pressure. That's a ton of info. We also have performance, so you can do zero to 60 times if that's something you uh, wanna play around with. Your fuel economy stream, trip info, see what's playing over the entertainment. If you wanna connect your phone, you can look at your messages, and then we're back to that screen setup page that I showed you before. So. Um, I'm liking this a lot. This is exactly what I want. I want beautiful dials. I want a customizable center display, and I want them in bright, vibrant colors so that I can see everything while I'm driving, and you get that 100% on the Challenger. So I am a, a big, big fan of the gauge cluster. Uh, let's look at a couple other things. Um, over on the left-hand side, standard controls for your locks, windows, and your side view mirrors. Down below, is where your door latch is. It takes a little getting used to because it, it is kind of a low reach, but it's right there. And the door is awfully big, which is something I'm still getting used to. Up on the dash, we have a dial uh, to adjust the headlights, other dials to adjust the brightness of the display and turn on and off the interior lights, your hatch release, and then a push pedal parking brake right here. And then your hatch, not your hatch release, your hood release right here as well. Side view mirrors are a little bit small in my opinion, but uh, they're attractive, at least from the outside. And no blind side detection on this trim level, which is uh, unfortunate, but you know, it's basically a two-seater, so it's not that bad to see around the vehicle while you're driving. Up top, 
we have sunglass holder with some nice felt lining and then just some really simple lights to adjust. Rear view mirror, no controls on it of any kind and no toggle switch. You can actually turn on and off the, uh, what's it called, the auto dimmer feature on this in the center display. So speaking of the center display, let me turn it on. Like All right, so fairly small screen. Let me see if I can grab my cell. I think it's in my pocket. Here's my cell, pretty standard, right? This is an uh, Pixel 3a, and you'll see that the size of my cell and the size of the screen are almost identical. So it's not an enormous display, uh, but I like how this is set up. So you have a menu features on the bottom, no actual physical buttons anywhere around the screen, and you can just jump to all the important stuff. So media, I haven't connected my cell yet. Uh, a climate screen, your apps screen, not a ton, but there's that mirror dimmer that I talked about a second ago. Phone screen to connect your uh, phone, and then a compass screen to show you where you're going, and then a simple setup screen. And if you'll notice, when I'm hitting these menu buttons, there's a red circle that pops up and then it sort of like enlarges and then disappears. So let me show you a couple of times. I don't know, little details like that are, are awfully nice in my opinion. Pretty simple climate controls. You have a screen up here where you can adjust everything or you have climate controls down here as well. And you have dials to adjust the volume and then the tuner on the entertainment features. And I like these because they have a, kind of a soft rubber lining on top. Do you see those little uh, indentations right there? Uh, that's just really nice because it makes it easy to grab and manipulate and it feels more like a, a premium system um, than a car at this price point. Hazard button in the middle, screen on and off button, that's always nice. Mute, and then you can shift the vehicle into sport mode right there along with your traction control button. A dial to adjust the fans and then uh, simple controls for everything else. So. Center display, climate controls, um, a little bit simple, uh, but easy to use, easy to view, um, so I'm kind of a big fan. Also, your gear shift is interesting as well. You have a button on the side to manipulate it, and then you have LEDs uh, right here on top to show you what you are, uh, what gear you're in. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, then you can shift it over and then adjust the gears manually if that's something you're interested in doing. And then when you do put it into reverse, you get a pop-up screen, pop-up screen. You get a, a rear view camera that pops up on the screen with some guides right here to show you how close you're getting to vehicles. When you manipulate the steering wheel, I'm terminating it right now, you'll see that those guides move. And it kind of shows you where you're going. Um, you know, if you drive this car daily, you probably don't need something like that. But for someone like me, who's only driving this for a couple of days, I gotta say, it's really, really helpful to have those guides. Also, the resolution on the rear view camera is, is pretty crisp. You can see that building behind me. It's not that grainy. Uh, and you can see the lanes, the markers in the parking lot behind me as well. So a pretty good display all in all. I'm a little disappointed though that we have the two black boxes right here. The screen isn't actually adjusted, the resolution at least, isn't adjusted to take advantage of the entire display right here, so they've sort of cut it off a little bit, which, I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it's a little bit disappointing. Also, nice leather right here, and some good stitching. Two uh, cup holders right here. What am I drinking today? Some sort of uh, cold pressed juice. And then you have your center armrest right here, a really soft leather with some visible stitching. I'm always a fan of that. A button right here to open it up. And then, you know, a fairly small storage area. This isn't huge, but you do have a DC power port right here that you will need an adjuster for. Two USB ports. Those are the old fashioned USB, not USB type C. And then an auxiliary jack right here. This is all lined in a nice felt material, so it feels uh, fairly premium. So all in all, it's, uh, it's actually really comfortable to sit in this seat because this is clearly designed not for storage, but for style and comfort, which I'm a big fan of. So one other feature about the front seat I want to mention is that the uh, window actually adjusts up and down when you open and close the door. So I've got it open now. Um, watch how the window right up top will actually move up about a centimeter and seal itself when we close the door. Did you hear it? Let me do it one more time. So the window has gone down about a centimeter. I'm going to close it and listen carefully and you'll hear it slide into place. Kind of cool. All 
Alright, so I jumped in the passenger seat and I pushed the seat back the same distance as the driver's seat just to give it a nice comparison. And you'll notice I have plenty of leg room. I can actually stretch my legs all the way out and I'm not actually hitting the full back. That's fantastic because I'm six feet tall and uh, typically in a car like this I would feel pretty cramped, but not, not in this one. Also, uh, a couple amenities. We have a small pocket right here with some Nesh metting. That's nice. Let's see. Probably works great for a cell. It's pretty nice. And then an individual power port right here, although you will need an adapter for that. Let's see. We have another cup holder here on the door. That door latch is in the same position, so kind of low. So it takes some getting used to, but uh, keeps the car looking really crisp and clean. Door locks, window controls, and then actual knob right here for the door lock. I don't see those very often anymore. Uh, glove box, pretty decent size. We have a shelf on top. That's where the owner's manual is supposed to go, but that doesn't look like that's what Enterprise has done. And then uh, here's the actual manual itself. Felt lining. Feels premium and uh, you know plenty of storage for what you're going to need this for. You can stick your owner's manual up here, maybe your registration materials down here, and then you have room right here for some other materials as well. So uh, pretty decent setup, all in all. All right, so uh, let's see if I can actually get in the back seat. So if you look right now, there's almost no space between the seat and the back of the passenger seat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it forward real quick. All right, so I pulled it forward just out of curiosity. Let's see if I can still fit up here. So, not super comfortable, but I have about an inch between my knees and the dash, and I can still stretch out my legs almost completely. So that's a good thing. So someone can sit in the front. Now let's see if I can jump in the back. So, latch right here, collapse the seat forward. Let's get the seat belt out of the way. Let's jump in the back. All right, so I physically did it. That's, that's a plus. Let me pull the seat back. All right. So I fit. My knees and the seat are not touching, right? About two, three inches, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, I'm not that comfortable. I gotta be honest. I feel like I'm really squeezed back here. So even though my legs technically fit, the rest of me really doesn't. Let me show you. So my head is hitting the ceiling. Even though I slouch, it's still scraping the top. So if I'm sitting back here, I'm gonna have to kind of scrunch down, which is not great. And then I'm sure the person in the front seat is also gonna be uncomfortable as well. And then look how little room there is over here. So this is how I had the driver's seat set up. I mean, it's not even physically possible for someone to sit in the back unless they're a really small child. Um, so, Having passengers is probably not going to be something you're going to do a ton with the Challenger, but I guess technically it's physically possible to squeeze someone back here for a little while if you really don't like them. Um, also, not a whole lot of amenities back here, so you do have pockets on the back of these seats. This is kind of a synthetic material, and there's one on the passenger seat and on the driver's seat. Uh, two vents, no power ports of any kind, um, nothing on the armrests right here. So no controls for the windows or door locks or anything like that. Although you have a, a small hook uh, back here that I guess you could hang a jacket. And then a small reading light right here. And then there is an armrest as well that falls down and has two cup holders in it. Although when you have that up, there's even less room back here. So not a, not a great back seat, at least in my opinion. Uh, let me show you one more thing car seat anchors. Uh, so here's the icon and then the anchor itself is not exposed but if you manipulate the seats just a little bit then you can get access to it. It's right there. So it won't be too hard to set up a car seat back here but I gotta be honest I can't imagine a child would be that comfortable because there's just not a lot of leg room uh, for them back here at all. Alright last test I want to do is can I actually get out of here uh, without the help of somebody else? So I'm gonna pull on this latch right here, push it forward, that's pretty easy. But then you see that door latch, how it's way in the front. So I gotta 
squeeze my hand in here. Oh, that's a tough reach. And then push the door open, and then I can pop out. It's kind of a workout. So the last thing I want to talk about is storage. So let's pop open the trunk and take a look. Um, I don't know about you, but I was pleasantly surprised. There's actually a decent amount of storage space back here. Those wheel wheels, though, kind of infringe on the space a little bit, but there's, there's enough to have some suitcases back here, maybe a set of golf clubs, you know, the works, without having any trouble. And underneath the floor of this area, there is a spare tire. It's always a positive, because some auto manufacturers are taking these away. And then if you do need to haul around a larger item, those rear seats do fold down. I'm not going to lie, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get back there, um, and then... Once you are, you have to pull on these little uh, cords, I guess is the best way to describe them. And then the seats do fold down pretty easily. Um, but it's not a big cutout, right? It's about a 60-40 split. So you don't have a ton of room for a larger item, but it is, it is technically possible. All right, so that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2020 Dodge Challenger SXT. Uh, for 25 grand, I think you get an awful lot of vehicle. And uh, if you like the styling of this car, then uh, I think this one's going to be for you. So don't be surprised that I'm going to give this one five stars. Look, it's not a perfect vehicle. Don't get me wrong. But for 25 grand, the amount of horses you get, the fun factor, Boy. the amount of decent technology you have on this thing, I, I just don't have a whole lot to complain about. If you haven't driven one, I strongly, strongly suggest that you take one out for a test drive you can rent it or you can go to your local dealer but trust me it is uh, that much fun anyway that's it for now thank you so much for joining me for this one and i hope you join me next time when i'm back renting my 156th rental car i'll see you then